Welcome to my channel. Today, through this video, I will be talking about uh, cancer or the malignant tumor. So, in this first slide, it is written when normal cells have uh, lost the usual control over their division, differentiation, and apoptosis, they become tumor cells. Now, the main agenda which we need to read about this uh, topic and these are benign and malignant tumor, clonal evolution in cancer, properties of cancer cells and at last we will check the molecular basis of cancer. So first we will see about the benign and malignant tumor. As you all know, a normal cell undergoes regulated division, differentiation and apoptosis. Apoptosis means programmed cell death. Now when normal cells have lost the usual control over their division, differentiation and apoptosis, they become tumor cells. Now these tumor cells, we can divide them into or group them into two categories. One is called benign tumor and another is called malignant tumor. This diagram here in left hand side, it is showing one benign tumor. And in right hand side, we can see the malignant tumor. Now, uh, in this diagram, visually we can observe the difference. Now, what are the internal properties going in benign and malignant tumor? In case of benign tumor, the differentiation process is well differentiated. But in malignant tumor, lack cell differentiation happens. If we see the rate of growth for the benign tumor, it is very slow. But the rate of growth process in malignant tumor is very fast or rapid. Invasiveness, if we observe for the benign tumor, it is totally absent. But invasiveness is fully found for a malignant tumor. Metastasis, that means spreading from one tissue to another tissue, it is totally absent for the benign tumor, which is located for the malignant tumor. So these are actually uh, the differences between the benign tumor and the malignant tumor. So tumors actually classified into four major groups according to their origin, where they mainly originated. And it may be originated in the epithelial cells or tissues or in the mesenchymal uh, tissues that means embryonic connective tissues or to the hematopoietic tissues or to the neuroectodermal tissues. Now, the most common human cancer are of epithelial origin that is called carcinoma. Most carcinomas fall into two categories. One is squamous cell carcinomas arise from epithelial cells that is showing protective uh, feature and another kind of carcinomas which is known as adenocarcinomas that is mainly found for the epithelial cells which are having the secretory functions. So some epithelial cells are showing protective function and if there are any kind of um, disturbance happen in their cell then it mainly uh, form um, carcinomas and mainly it is called squamous cell carcinomas. But when in epithelial cells, those are showing secretory activities. Here, the cancerous form is called adenocarcinomas. In the mesenchymal cells, the sarcomas are mainly found. The sarcoma, that is one type of uh, cancer, uh, okay, it is mainly located in the embryonic connective tissues or in the mesenchymal cells. Now, when the cancerous situation happens in hematopoietic tissues, then it is called hematopoietic cancers. And these are of three types. One uh, hematopoietic cancer, which is mainly happening in the blood forming tissues, that means in bone marrow, that is called leukemia. Sometimes it happens not in the blood cells, but it happens in the plasma cells, then it is called myelomas. And sometimes it happens in the lymphatic organs, mainly in the lymph nodes, then it is called lymphomas. And neuroectodermal tumors that mainly originate from components of the nervous system. So these are the different different kinds of tumors according to their origin. Now if we see the clonal evolution in cancer. So most cancer originate from single abnormal cell that is from monoclonal origin. 
most cancers are initiated by genetic changes and majority of them are caused by changes in somatic cells and therefore are not transmitted to the next generation actually about 1% of all cancers is due to genetic changes in germinal cells and is therefore inherited and about 80% of these inherited cancers are dominant in nature. So the transition of a normal cell into a tumor cell, uh, which mainly happens, that process is mainly called as transformation. So we will see in next slide. So what do you mean by transformation? Transformation means when the normal cell it transform into a tumor cell, then we can refer it as transformation process. At the cellular level, the development of cancer is viewed as a multi-step process involving genetic and some epigenetic changes. And selection for cells with, with progressively increasing capacity for initiation, promotion, progression and metastasis. So initiation, it involves genetic changes in cancer related genes. Okay. Promotion is generally associated with increased proliferation of the initiated cell and progression it is the final stage of neoplastic transformation that means the development of cancer usually requires a gradual accumulation of genetic and epigenetic changes in a number of different genes. And at last metastasis that involves the spread of cancer cells from the primary site to other parts of the body. Now, once a normal cell, when it transforms into a cancer cell, then that cancer cells are showing such kind of properties which it is given here. Number one, immortalization. That means normal cells have a limited capacity to grow and divide, both in in vivo and in vitro situation. But in case of cancer cell, um, cancer cells are immortal and can grow indefinitely. This is the first property I have written here. Number two loss of anchorage dependence okay most normal cells must be attached to a rigid substratum in order to grow um, they do not proliferate well when they are suspended in fluid or a semi solid agar gel if these cells make contact with a suitable surface they proliferate and this type of growth is called anchorage dependent growth but transformed cells can proliferate even when they are in suspension cultures or in a semi-solid medium without attachment to a substratum and this is called anchorage independent growth that means for this growth anchorage property is not actually uh, important so cancerous cells without any kind of anchoring they can grow third contact inhibition Normal cells migrate across the surface of a cultured dish until they make contact with a neighboring cell. But cancer cells, in contrast, continue moving after contact with their neighboring cells, migrating over adjacent cells and growing in disordered multilayered patterns. Fourth, invasiveness and metastasis. So here, one of the most important characteristic of cancer cells is their invasiveness and metastasis. Invasiveness, it refers to the ability of tumor cells to invade neighboring tissues. In contrast, metastasis describes the ability of cancer cells to migrate to a new location and proliferate to produce the secondary tumor. Number five, fail to undergo apoptosis. Apoptosis means programmed cell death. So another general characteristic of more, most cancer cells is that they fail to undergo apoptosis and therefore exhibit increased lifespans compared to their normal counterparts. So now we will talk about the molecular basis of cancer. That means in gene level if you observe about the cancer, um, all genes whose genetic and epigenetic changes contribute to the causation of cancer are described as cancer related genes or cancer critical genes. So now the cancer related genes or cancer critical genes are mainly classified into two broad 
group. So one is called proto-oncogene and another is called tumor suppressor gene. Genes for which a gain of function mutation drives a cell toward cancer are called proto-oncogene. That means in case of proto-oncogene, a gain of function mutation happens. But genes for which a loss of function mutation drives a cell towards cancer, then such kind of genes are called as tumor suppressor genes. Now, now we will observe how a proto-oncogene actually it is activated to an oncogene. So there are few mechanisms are associated for this activation from proto-oncogene to its cancerous causing gene oncogene. So these uh, mechanisms are point mutation, then um, chromosomal translocation, gene amplification and insertional activation. So point mutation means a proto-oncogene may be converted into an oncogene through a single alteration of a nucleotide. So if there is any kind of alteration happens in the nucleotide base pair, then it is called point mutation and due to this the proto-oncogene can convert into oncogene or cancer causing gene. So these alteration may be the deletion of a base or the insertion of an extra base or the substitution of one base for another. So if we observe one example. Uh, in which point mutation converts proto-oncogene to oncogene is reported in the RAS proto-oncogene. Chromosomal translocation. Chromosomal translocation may result in the activation of proto-oncogene. Translocation induced overexpression of a proto-oncogene is best exemplified by Burkitt's lymphoma. That is one kind of cancerous situation. In Burkitt's lymphoma, the MYC containing segments of chromosome 8 translocate to chromosome 14. That means due to chromosomal translocation, the cancerous situation mainly happens due to the activation of proto-oncogenes to oncogene. Gene amplification. Activation of proto-oncogenes is also associated with their amplification. That means increase in copy numbers. It results in overexpression of the amplified genes. The most interesting example is the amplification of proto oncogene MYCN in neuroblastoma. The fourth one, the fourth mechanism, insertional activation. Insertion of mobile genetic elements such as retrovirus changes the expression of genes but leave their coding sequence unaltered. Okay, so in sertional activation there is the another factor or a mechanism that can also uh, activate the proto-oncogene into oncogene. So this proto-oncogene and uh, they can activate into an oncogene or cancer causing gene due to these four mechanisms. Now these are, uh, I have listed here few oncogenes, a representative list of proto-oncogenes implicated in human tumors. So these are uh, few proto-oncogenes listed, ABL, ERBB, E2, N1, MYCH, thus. And here, now what type of cancer situation mainly activated due to the activation of this proto-oncogene and which kind of proto-oncogenes are associated for which type of cancer that is mainly mentioned in this chart. Now next we will talk about the tumor suppressor genes. So tumor suppressor genes involved in cell cycle checkpoint activation. Mainly it is involved in cell cycle checkpoint activation, DNA damage repair, induction of apoptosis and prevent unregulated cellular growth. So actually tumor suppressor gene when there are uh, a loss of function mutation happens in this tumor suppressor gene that mainly uh, leads to cancerous situation. And this tumor suppressor gene normally it is involving in the cell cycle checkpoint activation in DNA damage, uh, damage repair or in the induction of the programmed cell death process or in the apoptosis process and also it prevents unregulated cellular growth. Now five broad classes of genes are generally grouped into tumor suppressor genes. 
genes that regulate or inhibit cell cycle progression genes that encode receptors or developmental signals that inhibit cell proliferation genes encoding checkpoint control proteins that arrest the cell cycle if dna is damaged genes that promote apoptosis and number five genes that encode enzymes that participate in dna repair so here are uh, here i have listed few uh, tumor suppressor genes and uh, due to the inactivation of these tumor suppressor genes um, this type of cancer situation mainly arises in human body out of these p53 genes it is the most important one and most common example we are mainly taking for tumor suppressor gene now carcinogen what do you mean by carcinogen carcinogen means agents that initiate or promote tumor formation or cancer formation and we can call them as carcinogens so there are three classes of carcinogenic agents are known Uh, one is physical carcinogen where uh, different type of radioactive agents like uv ray and gamma rays are involved due to some chemical um, implementation in the body that can also create carcino car uh, carcinogenic uh, formation that is and the example is given benzo pyrene and benzene and few biological agents are also related for cancer causing that is fungovirus so this is known as carcinogens um now in chemical carcinogens there is one important example i just want to introduce here that is called aflatoxin aflatoxin actually it is a mycotoxin toxin which is uh, mainly extracted from the uh, mycota or for, from the um, uh, from the fungi okay that is one kind of indirect acting carcinogen aflatoxin produced by the fungi aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasitacus Uh, are among the most potent liver carcinogen known other common examples of chemical carcinogens which are also associated uh, with a number of human cancers are benzene that is associated for leukemia arsenic that is for lung and skin cancer cadmium for prostate cancer radon for lung cancer asbestos for lung and gastrointestinal tract cancer vinyl chloride that is angiosarcoma and for liver cancer so these are some uh, important chemical carcinogens which i mentioned so this is about the cancer and its related terms so thank you for watching this video